All right, without wasting any time, let's get into it. We're gonna be going over Arla Kino weapons, artifact different options, what her new artifact set in 4.6 will actually do, and different team comps. People seem to think that she can't work with healers because healing ruins her buffs and stacks, but it doesn't. She just physically can't be healed, but she still gets the buffs from everyone that heals. Arla Kino is actually not that hard to build. She's actually pretty straightforward. For this video, I'm going to be using Hu Tao as a template very fast before we get into the build. How does she work exactly? Her regular attacks do fuck all, unless you trigger her hidden talent within her regular attacks. It's a stack system. You need to hit 30% to trigger it. If you use her skill, you'll reset the stack system. So remember, use her skill at the end and the beginning of the sequence. So to start the sequence, use her skill. She'll lunge forward doing pyro damage to all enemies in front of her. They will be marked receiving interval pyro damage. Now that they're marked, you can gain stacks off them by using charge attacks or killing them. Using your burst will also give you an initial 15% stacks, as well as doing area of effect pyro damage. Her burst really doesn't do too much, just gives you some extra stacks and does pyro damage scaling off her HP, which is weird because she scales off attack and crit for the most part, but don't worry about that too much. Once this is accomplished, you then just do some charge attacks until you reach the 30% and hopefully you go overboard and you're going to get infused with pyro for your regular attacks and you're going to get a 40% pyro damage bonus. Just remember though, if you use your skill again by accident, you're going to restart the stack cycle and count and you'll heal yourself at the same time and you'll re-tag whatever enemies that are in front of you. If you don't end up tagging any enemies, you're not going to be able to gain these stacks so you're going to be stuck in a limbo type state till your skill resets after the 15 second cooldown and you'll have to restart all of this. Keep that in mind. And during combat she cannot be healed by anybody but herself. Incredibly simple razor language. Use her skill, make sure you hit people. Use your burst if you can. Use charge attacks until you get pyro infusion. Kill, rinse and repeat. Alright, her ascension stat is crit damage. She focuses on attack. The only thing that benefits from her HP is her burst damage, which isn't really that important in the grand scheme, and she'll have enough natural HP to be efficient. Weapon-wise, the Black Cliff Pole, if you're four star, it's got crit damage, but you can make up for it with crit rate in some other ways. The Deathmatch is another great four star option. You're really gonna wanna balance the crit rate and crit damage. She's a main DPS, so you wanna have investment where you're lacked. I don't think you have to go all crazy in with attack, with a double attack type weapon, unless you really need to, or that's all you have. Obviously, her signature weapon's going to be broken, because not only does it have an insanely high attack stat and crit rate, but it actually gives you these stacks free of charge. So you're already going to be able to enable that pyro infusion right away with this weapon of hers. The only downside to her weapon is it doesn't work on anyone but her. Her weapon's definitely something good to consider if you're only going to be building Arla Kino or she's going to be one of your main characters for a long time. It'll be a good investment. The Jade Spear is another great weapon for her if you already have this lingering because it has a very high attack, base attack, and crit rate which she's lacking. So if you already have this one kicking around or your savings on her signature weapon, unless you just like the aesthetic of it, because this aesthetic doesn't fit her at all, but it is a good weapon for her. Now for artifacts, we'll talk about her signature one coming out last. Firstly, you're not gonna be able to start off with this artifact set because while well, it's coming in 4.6, you can't farm for it right now. The one or two piece gladiator set comes to mind right away. Attack percentage you get for two piece and four piece because she's a polearm character. It'll increase your normal attack damage by 35% which is pretty damn good. So four piece gladiator most of us will probably have these lying around. You could mix this in a two piece gladiator, two piece crimson witch, get the pyro damage bonus on that as well. You could do a combination of two piece and two piece to get just double up on the attack percentages or the Marichu safe hunter sets another really good option. Because normal and charge attack damage increased by 15% with a two piece, you could pair this two piece with the glad or the four piece set even. When your HP increases or decreases, we know she's a main carry so she's going to lose HP and she's able to heal herself. Her HP is going to fluctuate so you'll be able to trigger this. Her crit rate will increase by 12%. Max 3 stacks. We know that crit rate is something that she's lacking. So this is another good option to run. Now, for her actual signature artifact set, it's pretty damn straightforward. 
18% attack for two piece, and then the four piece, when your bond of life increases or decreases, you gain 18% damage bonus. This can happen every three seconds, and it can stack three times, which means you can get a total of 54% damage increase bonus from her signature artifact set that's coming out. These are some options you can build her with, but ultimately I'd be farming for her signature set long term if you're planning on using Arlequino as a main or actually really investing into her. As for your stats, you just want to get Arlequino up to 3000 attack because when she has 3000 attack, one of her passives grants you 20% resistance to damage. And because she can't be healed by anyone during combat, this will help keep her from being killed from those stronger enemies. And because she's going to be on the field a lot, having at least 3000 attack is going to be essential. So in terms of the stats you go for with your artifacts, as long as you hit 3000 attack, I would dump the rest into pyro damage and crit rate or crit damage depending on what you're lacking. Because her ascension stat is crit damage, you're probably going to need more crit rate. If you're using a crit damage weapon, you'll definitely want a crit rate artifact. Having a pyro goblet or an attack stat goblet, I don't think it really, really matters all that much. She's going to get pyro infusion and pyro damage bonuses by 40%. So as long as you can hit that 3000 attack without using your goblet, you should be able to invest that into pyro damage with some good substats. So to summarize, attack percentage is key until you hit 3000, then you want to invest in your crit and your pyro damages. Make sure that your crit rate balances out with your crit damage. But overall, she's going to be absolutely deadly. Now to go over team comps. As for team comps, honestly, she's not that complicated. She's a main DPS. Build her like you'd build any other main DPS. Yalan, Xing Cho, any enablers, the Raiden Shogun will be a good secondary option. Kazuha, Vape and Overload, and Melt teams will be decent. I have seen people say that she won't work with Bennett. Of course she will. She'll gain all of the buffs that healers give her. Her being with a healer is not going to ruin her damage. She just physically cannot be healed by another character during combat, that's all. So the healing benefits that Bennett gives, she won't even be able to access. But the buffs that he gives, she will. So you can still use Bennett with her. Same with Farina. Farina buffs your damage through excess healing. Arlequina will not even be able to utilize any of that excess healing for herself. But the damage that Farina gives, and the buffs that she gives, Arlequina will still be able to utilize. She just can't be healed in combat by anybody but herself. So for those of you that were maybe worried that she wouldn't work with someone like Shivaris on an overload team, she definitely can. You can definitely place her with the Raiden Shogun, Shivaris, and Bennett for like an overload type team comp, and she'll still absolutely devastate enemies. She just can't heal. She just doesn't get the healing benefit of it. Healing doesn't detrimine her damage though, just to clear that up. And of course, any type of shielders you have, Zhongli, Toma, Layla with a melt comp, there's a lot of options you can run. And the amount of damage you're gonna receive from these stacks, her signature artifacts, different buffs you get from teammates and supports, she honestly looks fucking absurd right now, which is great as long as you're utilizing those stacks and you don't use her skill too early and erase them and restart. As long as you get a good rhythm with her, she'll be unbelievably strong. But if your rotations are wacky and you're constantly like erasing her stacks, or she's frail because you only have her attack at like 2000 or 1500, and she's not getting to utilize that full resistance passive, these are all things to consider. But I do hope this was helpful. I do think she'll work on a lot of different team comps. She has some good free to play options. And artifact wise, she's not that hard to build even in the meantime with what you have until you can farm up her set. If you're considering her signature weapon, if you're planning on making Arlequina one of your main characters that you're going to invest in for a long time to come, her weapon is definitely something to consider because you get these stacks for free. But hope you enjoyed the video, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and as always, we will see you all in the next one. Later.